Welcome back to the channel, Bernie. Welcome back, Dan. Welcome back, everybody. We've just been to Dartmouth. We have, yeah. And we thought we'd do a quick real golf video for everybody, didn't we? But yeah, hopefully they'll enjoy it. Absolutely. Now, what was the situation that we had in front of us at Dartmouth, Bernie? Okay, so at Dartmouth, we you were testing the new ping, some of the new ping irons. Yeah. So we decided that we were going to make it sort of a six club challenge, no woods, complete iron. So we had a four iron, six iron, eight iron, pitching wedge, our own wedge, and then a putter. So us using those clubs, we had to manipulate a lot, didn't we? Yeah, I mean... Um, probably what was the biggest thing that you took from that? Okay, so obviously off the tee, we'd normally be hitting longer clubs, less loft, you know, your woods, etc. So you'd be gaining more distance. We only had a four iron, that was our maximum club with the least amount of loft. So we had to manipulate that to try and get the maximum distance we could out of a four iron. So we've got this real golf video for you today where we're just gonna talk through what we were thinking when we were playing those four irons off the tee to maximize our distance. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. But now let's go and see a few of those shots that we were hitting off the tee. Is that ballooning? No, it's good. No, it's not hit well. It's all right. I've got to say it. Maximising yes. distance is an important part of that game that we were playing, Bernie, as you could see from those shots. Yeah, but I mean, it's not just for that particular um, game we were playing. It yeah. could be, you could be in between clubs. Some people have gaps between clubs. It might be four iron into their rescue club. There might be a big gap and they might be faced with a par three where their distance is right in the middle. Yeah. And they haven't got an actual club that is going to land or finish that distance. Also, you could find yourself in a position where maybe the pin is at the back of the green yeah. and you want a shot to come in maybe a little bit flatter, a little bit lower in that descent angle so it skips up the green a little bit more or even you've got like a slope in the green that you want to try and deal with and run it up the slope. So these shots that we were playing can be used in loads of different ways as you quite rightly said. Yeah, and hopefully the ideas we've got, um, which might not be complete textbook or talk to people hopefully might give them an idea of how to actually achieve what we were trying to achieve okay so let's start off with it then so you've got yeah. a couple of ways in which you were trying to maximize distance with that long iron that four iron that we yeah. had at dartmouth i mean my four iron generally on a on a flat day on a range will carry 200 yards okay good so maybe get sort of you know 210 215 roll out in the summer yeah um but obviously some of the holes are slightly longer so we wanted to get the ball further so okay so what what were you doing differently? And so, we've got I, I know we're yeah. not we're on the, we couldn't do this on the range here at Torquay because it's a little bit short. short but yeah. we've got six irons. You've got six irons, have, haven't yeah. you? So, so what are you going to do differently so in your setup? And things? One of the, one of the things I did, which was, was quite an easy thing to do, I just teed the ball slightly higher. Okay. Um, that was when it was downwind. So I wanted to try and launch the ball up. So I teed it slightly higher and put the put the ball position slightly slightly. Um, slightly further forward yeah. and almost tried to hit it into the air to use a little bit more sort of dynamic loft impact to get the ball up there so the wind could then have its effect and carry it further. So actually what you were doing by teeing it up, putting the ball position forward, you yeah. were actually hitting maybe a little up on the ball, yeah. which you're adding a little bit of loft to the club, yeah. but you were reducing spin. spin yeah. Just, just, it was only on the downhill, it was a couple, there was one of the holes which was straight down, downwind, downhill. And I yeah. thought if I could get it as high as possible, when it's coming, when it's coming down, yeah. it'll have less spin, but also because of the height it's coming down at, I was hoping that it would hit the downslope and then and shoot, then shoot another on. 15, 20 yards further yeah. than, a, than a, the traditional four iron. So Lester just teeing it up now, just to give us a bit so, of a demonstration on what he's going to do there. So just that, compare that normal be, position. That would be my normal tee height, so yeah. just a good lie, basically. Just, Probably just above sort the of, ground, yeah, isn't it? Probably, yeah. you know, a quarter of an inch above the ground. But okay. on that this particular occasion, I was almost going, you know, that again. So, so a little bit if higher. If I stuck it down now, yeah, it's you'd right almost up there, see it's it towards the top of the blade. But yeah. obviously, I'm gonna not gonna try and hit the top of the blade. No, okay. 
So my normal ball position would be in here with a forearm, hands yeah. here. So for this one, I literally stood into this position. Okay, and, and how far forward do you think that is in your stance? So I would say that's An midway inch. between sort of my heel in the middle of the yeah middle of the it is bang thing. on but but as a normal position it's what half an inch to an yeah, inch further forward yeah three quarters of an inch further forward okay and I notice that you widen your stance a fraction there is I that is I that widen right? my stance because when you're hitting longer clubs you want a more solid base okay um, you know so an iron an iron stance would be here driver stance is slightly wider for okay. me okay so for this you're looking to launch yeah I'm up, almost so. trying to create a driver position uh, yeah but hit my iron so okay give us a go then. And then do you lean behind it a little bit? A little bit, bit more? yeah. I'm, I'm not going to push my hands forward. No. Um, I'm going to try and get it into the air as quickly as possible. I mean, nice, that's, gone that's about, some serious height. That's gone like 40 yards in the air higher than I normally hit it. Yeah, absolutely. So just that little bit of shoulder lean. I little bit of that yeah, a little bit of shoulder a lean. Fraction behind. Try to really sort of hit it on the up. Yeah. Um, Having the ball position slightly further forward but also gave me, I feel like it gave me more power because I had more, yeah. I had little, more time to actually get to the ball. Yeah. Um, and just show me where you're looking to strike it in the face as well because it's not, because most people are going to say, well, if you're teeing it higher, surely you're going to strike it higher on the face. Yeah, but, I, I was still hitting it. No, I was still hitting up on it. Yeah, I mean, um, I was slightly, I wasn't, when I addressed it, I wasn't putting the club right behind the ball. I was actually, again, slightly. Um, slightly off the ground just to yeah. make sure I didn't actually hit any ground. Yeah. I mean, you'll see there, there's no, there was no brushing of the ground at all. It was all taken off the top, but that's probably 30 or 40 yards higher than what I'd normally hit it. So for me, I did it in a slightly different way than that. Obviously, Lester's trying to launch it up in the air on more of those downwind sort of shots. But most of the time, what I was trying to do was what I call my trap draw shot. So what I mean by that is that I'm trying to de-loft the club as much as I can. So I'm taking as much loft off the club as possible. Uh, in order to keep the ball in the air, so you don't want to de-loft it too much, but keeping it enough loft there to get it in the air, to trap it and get it out there. So what I do for that is I put the ball position, whereas Leicester had the ball position quite a way forward in his stance to launch it up in the air, I'm going lower, so I'm putting my ball position a little bit further back in my stance. Like I said, that's going to keep the handle forward for me and then take a little bit of loft off the actual club itself, which in turn turns it from a four iron into more like a two iron is what I'm kind of trying to think about when I'm playing this shot. Now, with the ball position being slightly further back in the stands, I know that my kind of swing path is gonna move a little bit more from in to out, which in turn is gonna promote more of a drawing effect on the shot. So I'm gonna play for that. I'm gonna try and hit that hooking shot. So when it lands, it's gonna run out with maximum distance when I'm playing it. So really, really important that you allow for that draw shot when you put the ball position back in the stance. Always remember that club face is still pointing to pretty much where I want it to go, so where I want the end result of the shot to be. And then all I do is do the same swing, a little bit narrow in the stance, ball position back, and then keep that handle forward and press it forward from there, keeping it much lower, getting that flight to really come out low and chasing up the fairway to maximise distance. So that's my way of doing it, Bernie. It's but good, you yeah. had a, another way again, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, I like the, that, what you do there because the initial flight is lower and then yeah. it rises. Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, particularly if you're hitting into the wind, that, that initial low flight yeah. will give you maximum sort of, sort of distance rather than the one I hit earlier. If I hit that into the wind, it's coming sort of back at you. Correct, yeah. Um, Even though you're taking spin off of it, it's, it's still, still, it's still, still going to rise up into the wind. Because of the height that you're actually creating, yeah. it's just the wind's going to hit it and bring it back slightly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's really good. But the other, the other way I would do is I'd just aim extremely right yeah. um, and then try and hit a hook. Okay. So again, so de-lofting the golf club. Similar to what I did. So, exactly, similar to what you did, but I would keep my keep everything in the same ball, ball position. position in the similar spot. So yeah, so. just sort of set my alignment 30, 40 yards right of target. Yeah. Try and swing it more on the inside. I am one of those guys that everyone knows that I do tend to come over the top that okay, way. Okay, yeah. So I'm really going to feel like I'm coming inside and then really, really release that club. Okay, so just playing for that hook. So are you aiming the feet right and everything I mean, everything's right? Everything's aiming right and I'm going to okay. max and hook it. If I miss it left, it's fine. Yeah. But I, it should roll. Obviously, it'll be lower because I'm hooking it. But I'm going to go sort of... Yeah, you are aiming way off to the right there. And let me just come around and uh, before you hit, let me just look yep. at your ball position quickly there. Okay, yeah, so too. pretty much just forward of centre on the Which stance, is similar to what I would do on a normal shot. In your normal scenario. And I'm going to try and start it almost right at that flag and hook it up to the other fly. 
Great, perfect. Same shape as mine. Yep. Same shape as mine, but just so much higher. Just sort of kept it on the inside and made sure I've turned and got that club rotating through. And interestingly, Bernie, is that they've both actually finished in a pretty similar spot. Mine's just chased, chased up, up there, yours yeah. is carried pretty much all the way there. So yeah. two almost similar shots, but completely like different, different flights, flights and different ways of getting there. Yeah. So there's three slightly different ways of getting more out of the golf club. And you can see there from Leicester and the way he played those two different types of shots. Again, two completely different ways of doing it, but ultimately getting a similar result. And with the way I played it as well, just again, slightly different way of doing it, but getting a similar result again. Now, there's no perfect way of, of finding how you can find more yardage out of your club, obviously swinging it harder, things like that can always help as well. But it's just ways in which we can practice and play, introducing new types of shots into our game. As Lester quite rightly said, we just talked about it off camera, thinking outside of the box. How do you get a golf ball around a golf, ball, golf course in as little shots as possible, but trying to maximize each club as best as you possibly can? I think it's, if you can practice this, it's only gonna make you a better golfer. It's gonna get you thinking just slightly differently as you work your way around the golf course. But we'd like to hear what you think. Do you do anything different to what we do? We'd like to hear in the comments down below. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing from these real golf videos, that you hit that subscribe button, you leave a comment, you give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you all again very soon.